So hello everyone. Welcome to the closing video for week eight. I cannot believe we're almost done this course and you all as usual and as I ex I've come to expect have done a wonderful job with uh, this week's discussion and which focus on digital literacy and you brought up some wonderful points really diving deeper with digital literacy what it means to you what it means to your teaching how it impacts your students so i'm gonna talk about some of your main points that you brought up and um, highlight some of the you know the questions you were tackling in your discussion so the first one was you know digital literacy is important especially when it comes to really teaching your students about accurate, reliable sources versus inaccurate, unreliable sources, such as fake news. And all of you said this is so important, especially in today's society. They have to know, um, you know, that there are these types of sources out there. They have to know how to navigate, um, tell the difference and why these sources um, are being put out there. It's a purpose. Um, and you really said, you know, it's important to you because that information they get from whatever sources will impact them and their thoughts and how they view the world. So you said, you know, digital literacy is so important in teaching students, you know, between accurate and inaccurate information, such as fake news. And you really dived deeper, dived with that deeper and said, you know, it's needed and it's needed not only with news but just in general being able to look at a source and know that it is um it, it's reliable information you know has been researched and you know so they're not being swayed in the wrong direction so thank you for that the second point you talked about was did digital literacy allows the students to become more active and be active participants, you know? It's not about them just consuming what you say or consuming what, you know, they read online. It's really making them active in the process, you know? Look at who's writing the article you see online, you know? Um, be critical in your thinking when you're reading, really making them a part of it and not just, and encouraging, encouraging them to ask questions, um, to, to um, think critically about what they're reading and, and to push back if they disagree. Um, and you said, you know, that's important for you because you don't want them to just simply consume. You don't want them to simply just go along with something. They have to be able to um, actively engage with these sources and know that it's okay. Um, and I've, it's interesting that you brought this up and it's important because I've ha received a lot of emails and feedback from many of you saying, you know, that's what they love about this course is that it's not only about reading, um, you know, scholarly journals, you're getting to interact with different types of, I guess, pieces, sources from news articles to documentaries to movies, just to scholarly articles, just a variety. And um, you get to, it's important to know what the research says, but you like the fact that your opinion is being valued. Your opinion, you're looking at it from your perspective, what it means to you personally, but what it means to your teaching. And seeing it pop up in digital literacy, you like that. That's important. And you're right, it is. And it was intentional when I designed this course to allow you to do that because it's, I want you to be active participants. I want you to be those active students and learners. So that was lovely to see that, you know, your you, digital literacy in terms of making, helps to make students active participants. You like that, you want to do it in your course too, and getting the feedback um, with students talking to me one-on-one -on -one or through email or private messaging, that that's what they like about this course. That's what they've noticed. So that's a great, thanks for diving deeper with that. That was wonderful to see. You also talked about, you know, digital literacy allows students to understand more about microaggressions and cyberbullying. Why, why, you know, it's happening, why it's inappropriate, how, how is it done online, and more importantly, how to avoid or stop it. You're right. You know, students need to be aware that the behavior online may be, there, there will be negative behavior online. Um, and they need to know how it occurs. 
and sometimes why it occurs. And maybe there may not be a why, it just does. But they need to be aware of it so that they can avoid it and so that they can push back against it. And then how it affects them as learners, right? That mental health impact that you brought into the conversation that cyberbullying and microaggressions can happen. So again, making students aware of it so they don't add to it, they don't, um, you know, cause it, but they stop it, they avoid it, they push back on it. So thank you. Now, we, a lot of you talked about, you know, digital literacy frameworks that you personally would um, harness um, in, you know, between the seven card categories, which ones you would look to more. Some of you talked about ethics and empathy, and you, which focuses on teaching social emotional skills and empathy. Um, it engages students in making ethical decisions online, including topics relating to cyberbullying, sharing digital content, etc. So really, you said, you know, ethics and empathy is like a lot of you said that's number one for you when it comes to the digital literacy framework. Others pointed out that, you know, they really liked computer com consumer awareness. You know, it focuses on teaching students how to navigate um, a commercialized online environment, how to identify advertisements, understand the terms of service on a website or app and how to be intelligent online users. This idea of, like really teaching them don't just agree. Don't just click yes. Just make sure you know what you're agreeing to. Make sure you know what content you're reading, what ad, what the advertisement is saying. So consumer's health was very important. Others said um, they really look to um, community engagement. So teachers teach students about their rights as citizens and digital consumers. It encourages students to take initiative to advocate for a fair, democratic, and positive digital climate. And a lot of you talked about you know, community engagement with regard to, hey, can we want, we want, it'd be nice to have an area in the curriculum or course where we talk about politics and helping students understand politics and that kind of uh, topic. So idea of like, you know, having community engagement and making sure students are equipped so they can engage um, properly and appropriately and that it's, you know, their rights as citizens. So you, you all really touched on the different categories that really spoke to you as um, teachers and what you would tap into first when implementing the digital framework. So a, a wonderful discussion, um, very lively and it was very deep. I wanna thank the facilitators um, for their questions um, and their social media activity. Um, I thought you all with the social media activity there was two options. Facilitators gave you two options. Um, they were both great. The comic strips that I saw popping up that you all were coming up with were wonderful, very creative, and really touched on important um, topics and ideas you face as teachers or you've encountered, um, you've experienced or witnessed. So this is, they were all wonderful. Um, and thank you for taking the time to do it. So sh nice shout out to the facilitators great activity, great questions. Um, I want to just point out that um, a lot of you said you did not have much experience teaching digital literacy, but found the Media Smarts, Media Smarts article on the website where they had a lot of lesson plans, a lesson plan idea is very helpful. It's nice to see that. Feel free to explore um, further um, and uh, share the website with other students not from this class if you guys have not encountered it um, before. And, you know, even though you have not had much experience um, teaching digital literacy, the fact that you all are so aware um, after reading the articles and talking to each other, um, you're so aware of what, how you want to teach and what's important. That is a strong foundation and um, you will do great in teaching and helping your students navigate the online world as well as, as you know, implementing the digital literacy framework. So great job, everyone. Um, have a wonderful um, weekend. Uh, and I look forward to week nine with the facilitators who have um, some great questions and an activity plan for you as well. All right, bye everyone.